up, everybody? Welcome to a very exciting episode of Beers for Build. I am your host, overexcited car guy, because today it's not Friday, it's not Saturday, it's my favorite day, it's new car day. You guys ready? Without further ado, here is my new GTR. That's right, I am finally joining the all-wheel drive club. This is my very, very crashed 2009 Nissan GTR. Welcome to the jungles of Portland, AKA secret, top secret hiding spot for cars. I wanna tell you all about this car. It has a really interesting backstory, uh, but it's really freezing outside, so let's move inside and let's, let's talk about how, how much did it cost? That is the cheapest GTR in the country. I know because I've done multiple minutes of research. Let me tell you about how I got it. Actually, let me just show you the moment when I got it. Now I got the car so cheaply because I bought it at auction. I also took a serious roll on the dice of the state that the car is gonna be in, which uh, you guys will see how that turned out in a second. It's got a very interesting backstory, but I got it so cheaply because I bought it at Copart. And that brings us to our sponsor for this episode. This episode is proudly sponsored by Copart. Huge thanks to them. Guys, Copart is a great place to get cars cheaply. Uh, there are thousands of cars in their inventory that you can buy with no license required, so you can just jump on there and start bidding, create an account and start bidding, and you can browse all of their stuff right now by hitting the link in the description. You can browse all of the different cars on Copart. You don't need a license to browse. Lots of states you don't need a license to buy in and or buy from. So if, for instance, you're near Oregon, you don't need a license to bid and buy in Oregon. So if you're, even if you're anywhere in the U.S., if you're in Florida, you can buy a car from Oregon with no license required and have it shipped over to you guys. So it's open to the public in that way. It's a great resource. Obviously, you guys have seen how many cars that I have bought at Copart, and I can't recommend them enough. So guys, hit the link in the description or go to copart.com slash B is for build. Sign up now, check out some cars, get your next project car or next daily driver, whatever you need. They also have cool stuff like snowmobiles if you just want to wild out. All right, back onto the story. Let's jump out there. I got to show you more about this car. So let's talk about the damage and then I will give you a breakdown of its checkered past. So this car was uh, clearly hit starting kind of right here, going backwards, it hooked the rear wheel and threw it way up into this area, just really going after kind of the trunk liner, the inner liner of the quarter panel, the outer liner of the quarter panel, took out some of this rear bumper as well and, uh, and totaled a lot of stuff. You should see what's left of the wheel. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Uh, so side skirts damaged, doors damaged, rear quarter panel is toast. Uh, and then things start to get a lot better. So coming around here to the front, uh, you guys have probably noticed, well, these wheel arches are cut out really, really far. Like what's that all about? Well, it's because this car had a Liberty Walk wide body kit on it. So not to spoil too much, but yeah, we're definitely doing that. I'm not gonna go ahead and <laughs> buy all new fenders and all new rear quarter panels to undo that. I love wide body cars. So this is going to be a Liberty Walk wide bodied GTR. We've got some awesome three piece wheels to go with it. Some other stuff that's just super cool that I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit. Coming around to the front though, it's it's things are looking pretty good. The bumper is in okay shape. It doesn't have any, uh, any like thing wrong with it that I could see. It's missing that little plug and these are always super expensive. So if you ever, just don't lose those on your car. Uh, I'll show you under the hood in a second, but let's continue the walk around. The headlights are a little, you know, a little faded out and stuff like that. It's not too bad. Um, this fender has a little, um, crease in it, but the body kit, I'll, I'll uncrease that and then the body kit should cover that up as well. The Liberty walk wide body kit is, you know, it's pretty big. It comes out to here. Uh, this side is pretty clean. Now the wide body job that they did on this car isn't really 
up to snuff for Oregon weather. That's not an all weather wide body job. This was a California or a Vegas car, I'm not really sure. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump back into this and we'll go ahead and seal that stuff all the rest of the way up. Uh, but it, and I guess we'll check the quarter panels for being full of rocks and dirt and dust and stuff like that. Uh, so coming around here, the previous owner had some, um, some holes drilled here to mount his rear spoiler on the trunk. Uh, this car is actually a custom uh, paint color, uh, which I don't know the paint code. I'm really trying to contact the previous owner to figure out the paint code. I'm wondering if I could show you guys any of this. It, eh, no, it's not gonna show up on camera, but this is a this is a three-stage paint. So it's a white at the base, and then it's got a, uh, a kind of a pearl essence put sprayed over that, and then the clear over that. Uh, the rear bumper is toast. I just had to buy a new one of those. It was very expensive. I actually ended up buying one from Japan, which is crazy. The rear um, like bumper lip attachment thing is toast as well. The rear diffuser is all gone. This is toast just because this right here is all, all busted out. So that stuff got busted out. The car you might notice has no exhaust and it's missing some other parts too. Let me jump under the hood for you guys real quick. So I was kind of bummed to see, I was really hoping that when I bought this car, I'd just see like a gajillion dollars worth of awesome aftermarket engine parts but I didn't. I actually saw the opposite. I saw missing engine parts. Uh, when you look down there, you'll see that the intake tubing that holds the mass airflow sensor and the air filters on both sides is completely gone. It looks like some of these uh, silicone couplers were kind of like hastily put back on. So I'm assuming the same thing happened with this car as what happened with my last BMW. The guy crashed it and uh, the insurance company didn't want to give him money for his mods, so then he started stripping the car off of everything that was aftermarket or everything that was valuable before it went off to the insurance company, which is always a bummer, but in this case of this car, like I told you, it has a really interesting past. It kind of helped us out a little bit. So he stripped that stuff off. He stripped his three-piece wheels off. He stripped his brake calipers and rotors off. Uh... I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else taken off the car. Oh, the exhaust. I knew I was forgetting something. The full exhaust system from the turbos all the way back is completely gone on this car, which is crazy. So uh, that brings me to it's like interesting past. It's first time going up for auction wasn't actually at Copart. It was at a different auction site. And so what the person did is, now this is fair game. Insurance companies allow you to do this. You take your aftermarket parts off and then they throw on some like Nissan Ultima wheels. If I can find the pictures, I'll show you right now of what it looked like. And so this car went up on a different auction site totally crashed the wheel just jacked up into this back corner here uh, the suspension obviously broken out and all that other stuff and it sold and then at an unknown point uh, and that was at an unknown time previous to when it went up for sale on Copart so then it comes back up on Copart I was playing games on Twitch and some people are like hey dude check out this GTR it might be something that you're interested in and I was like I can't afford a GTR and then I saw how cheaply it was going and I was like maybe we could figure this out but then when we Google the VIN number which is something you should always do when you're looking at buying a car like this you google the vin number and i saw those old pictures i was very curious so what happened is something that happens with exotic cars quite frequently is people will go to the yard they'll check them out they'll check out the damage so somebody looked at all the damage and what parts broke that made that wheel fly up to here they'll buy the car and they'll do some fixes that make it look better like having all four nissan gtr wheels on here and having them all four point relatively straight and then they'll put it back up on auction. Uh, and so that's what happened with this car. I knew it was back up on auction. I knew that there is a chance that there could be really shoddy repairs done to make this car straight. Now, when this thing was on the truck, I actually did get to peek at the frame underneath here. So there's two frame rails that run this way and this way. I got to peek at the frame and I got to peek at the new subframe or the new suspension components that they put on there and everything looks straight. It looks like the accident actually really luckily missed the frame. So you can see the, the rear impact bar section right there of the frame it's a little dark let me brighten it up a little bit you can see that right there and there's a little bit of separation here but overall this stuff looks pretty straight I'm not seeing signs from a frame straightener even needing to get involved here normally you can see clamping signs and other stuff like that so oh also suspension was gone too <laughs> this is not matching suspension all the way around so uh, the frame luckily I think is straight, but I'm not 100% sure, but at least the subframe does still bolt up. And if you have a subframe that bolts up, you can most likely change anything else with just adjusting the alignment on the car. 
So another really interesting thing about this car is when it was at auction, I believe it was marked as engine starts. So it made me confident enough to want to buy the car because the engine and drivetrain are worth a lot of money, period. But it wasn't marked as run, runs and driving. So I assumed the worst, bad transmission or bad rear differential. Did the research, I know how much they cost if I need to get a new one. We are not sure if we're safe and that those things are okay. But one thing I noticed once we got off the truck and we noticed, hey, it doesn't have brakes or rotors. Uh, that was really fun pushing it all the way over here and very scary without brakes and rotors. But uh, I did call Copart and I said, guys, are, is a car marked as not running and driving if it doesn't have brakes? And they said, yeah, we're not gonna test drive it in the yard going forward. They, they move the car forwards and backwards. That's how they test it. They're like, we're not gonna test that if it has no brakes because we can't stop the car. So my hope is that the transmission and the rear differential is okay. It looks fine from looking underneath. Again, when I saw it on the tow truck, it looks okay. But, um, and so it could be marked as not running or, or driving, I mean, because it had no brakes and rotors, or it be, could be because maybe it doesn't, you know, run and drive. I don't really know, but we will find out. Let me show you the interior. This window's broken, so we're gonna go in on the other side. This interior sucks a big one, mainly just because of these seats. These seats are gross. They are gray leather, which would be totally fine, but then they put this gray suede in here and it catches stains like nobody's business. So these seats, in my opinion, have to go as soon as I can figure out a good replacement. I have those extra set of Sparkos from uh, the 240Z build, but these also have heated seats, but I think it'd be really cool to take the heated seat elements out of this seat if we can. I'm not sure if it's gonna be very logical or very possible, but take the heating seats out elements out of this, put them in the Sparkos and then install the Sparkos in this car. I think that would look really good. Uh, the back seats are in a little bit better condition, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the back seats or if I'll put kind of uh, the, the, you can get some like carbon, carbon fiber like storage bucket type things in the back. So I'm not really sure. But uh, at least having black seats up front would be a big improvement because the door panels are black, the dash is black, all that, all that stuff is black. Uh, so the steering wheel made it through the accident. Airbag did not blow there. Here's a really interesting thing. Let me see if I can show you guys this. This is a half mile ticket from 2014 that this car did and it went 157 in the half mile. This car is not stock. And I'll tell you about the plans for it in a minute. The airbag blowout damage isn't too bad. We got a blown out seat side there, but hopefully I'll be replacing the seat. And then we got a blown out side curtain airbag there. What's also unfortunate around there is just the grease stains from people's hands, but I'll try and clean that up so we can save the headliner. The game plan for this car is to try and re-aim, re-arm and reactivate the airbag system, uh, but not replace those two airbags because I'm not a fan of reinstalling bombs in a car that I don't really know exactly how they work. But what I would like to do is you can essentially emulate an airbag making the car think that those two are there and what it'll do is it'll rearm the system so the other airbags that are in the car like the one in the for the passenger side dashboard the one for the driving steering wheel those will become reactive so that would be making the car a lot lot safer than what we've done in the past so 157 or 59 or whatever in the half mile is no easy task uh, i was really curious as to how this car actually got up to that speed um, it's got a tune on it and then it had exhaust put on it and air intake and that's basically all you need apparently to get to oh upgraded fuel pump and injectors to get to 650 wheel horsepower which is what this car dynoed at uh, according to the previous owner so that's where we're hoping to get to it too that is the max for the first gear in the transmission and the stock clutch on these cars as well as the turbos so if we wanted to go higher trust me i would love to like try and chase a thousand horsepower goal if we wanted to go higher we'd have to buy two new turbos turbos, a new first gear, and a new clutch for this car, and that stuff total costs way more than this entire car has cost me. So this is where we are keeping it, 650 horsepower is where we're going to keep it, hopefully get it down to the wheels like that. And this car is supposed to be my daily driver, this is supposed to replace me driving around in the FJ, because normally when it rains and stuff I take the FJ a lot, this is going to be the car that changes that. At least that's the game plan. I have goals and I have things that I will release at a later time of how we're gonna do a thousand horsepower build on the not such an expensive car that has such an expensive all wheel drive drive line. Let's jump inside and I'll show you some of the parts that I bought in Vegas. 
Welcome to the Beers for Build storage facility. I'm filming this uh, in the past, it's uh, Thanksgiving right now, because these wheels need to be sent off for repair. But I wanted to show you guys the wheels that we got for the GTR. So they are really, really awesome. They're forged aluminum three-piece wheels uh, made by RSV Forged. These were uh, from the previous owner. I bought them from him for $2,500 for the whole set of, of this. And you'll notice it's like two and three quarters of a wheel, and I'll explain that in a second. They're a staggered set of wheels. Uh, you got a huge lip on the rear here and uh, what's the tire size on these it's 315 30 on the rear and I think it's a 285 on the front so we got a lot a lot of rubber on these car on this car um, tires are gonna go we're gonna get new tires that are a little bit better for winter weather because I want to drive this car in the rain and I think it would be sketchy with those they're basically street slicks and uh, so you have one front and one rear that was on the passenger side of the car completely spotless on the driver's side of the car you have the front that got ding that needs a new lip um, and then this, believe it or not, this is the valuable part of a wheel. The forging of the centerpiece is actually the expensive part. The lip and the barrel, this being the lip and the backside part being the barrel, are actually pretty cheap. So um, that's why these are getting sent off for repairs. They're gonna put a new lip and a new barrel on this thing for about 600 bucks. Each one of these is about 23 to 2,500 bucks. So uh, it's actually very, very much worth it. And this is my first car with three piece wheels, so I'm really excited. But you could see that in the accident, the um, lip was just completely destroyed and ripped off of this thing, as well as the barrel on the back was just demolished. It got hit really, really hard in that rear area. Now that I think of it, I, I really gotta inspect that rear strut tower for damage. Have not looked at it yet. But anyways, this is the wheels. The uh, calipers that we also bought, these are just stock GTR calipers. Rotors, these are just rotors. Uh, but yeah, that's the wheels. These two are still here. These two, by the time you see this, are in the mail getting repaired. One other thing that I didn't mention that I bought in Vegas too was the original Cobb access port that has the tunes and the tune data for it. This car on it. It was the original one that was used on this car. So that's really good because my tuners here in Portland that we work with the 2JZ BRZ on, um, they can jump into that, they can access that, they can look at that tune and then they can make sure they can see what the adjustments were made for the fuel and the fuel pump, which is good because those are unknowns to us. They can make sure that that tune is safe and it makes sense and it's optimized and stuff like that. And then uh, they have an all wheel drive dyno so we can dyno it as well as um, I'm going to have them make me a little bit more mellow tune so I don't grenade the clutch on this car because of how expensive it is. So that's it guys, I hope you're excited. We have a 650 wheel horsepower, all wheel drive, wide body Nissan GTR for the next build. I'm so excited to get this thing on the streets. I have pipe dreams of being able to drive this down the west coast for my Christmas break and then I get to meet a lot of you guys as well down there with the build. I don't know if it's gonna get done in time. I don't think it'll, I, I know for sure it won't get done in time, but will it get to a running and driving state? We have no idea. In the next episode, we're gonna, I'm gonna call all the friends that I have, all three or four of them, and uh, see if they can help me push the car into the shop here, and we're gonna see if we can get it to start. And then if we can, I'm gonna see if they'll clean the shop for me. That'd be great. And then we can start working on repairing the rest of the car. I hope you enjoy it. Please stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. We build cool shit like this all the time. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Oh, also we dropped a bunch of new merch. It's right down there.